Books and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I read in November. I read seven books this month and the ratings were three stars, three and a half stars and four stars, so you know, a decent month. They are all horror in various different forms and first up I read The Face That Must Die by Ramsey Campbell. I believe this had originally come out sometime in the 70s but it was quite edited and then this edition came out a few years later, I think 1985, and has basically the stuff that was cut out uh, as far as I understand. So this is about a man called Horridge. He is kind of like a reject from society, he's always been something of an outcast even since a young age and yeah has generally spent his time alone and kind of growing to hate society as a whole and this is set in the 1970s in Liverpool England and the setting definitely gives a really strong sense of place and time and is a really big element of the story and Horridge is very misogynistic, he is very homophobic, he is against, you know, these immigrants coming in to the country and all of that stuff and there's that general sense of fear within, you know, certain pockets of the country that was happening at the time. Anyway, in this story there have been a couple of murders in the area and the victims have been gay men and Horridge has been, you know, reading about this in the newspapers and stuff and there is someone that he suspects is the killer and he takes it upon himself to follow this guy and stalk him and yeah, things progress, I won't go into the exact details of where the story goes, but yeah, he's convinced that he is doing the right thing by keeping an eye on this guy. So this is really a look into Horridge's mind and his thoughts and feelings and delusions and yeah, as a psychological horror it's yeah, really really well done and absolutely fascinating and yeah, even though Horridge is just a really awful person and a really repulsive character, he is a very interesting character and while most of the story is told from his perspective, we do also follow a few other characters that end up being involved in the story and they all live in this block of flats where the guy that Horridge is stalking also lives. It's hard to say too much more about this one I think without getting into spoiler territory so I'll leave it there I guess but I really enjoyed this one. His writing is absolutely brilliant and yeah just so evocative um, of this sense of unease and the mindset of this character and the things that he's doing and also, yeah, like I said before, the city, the sense of time and place were all just so well done. I found it to be a really absorbing read and I really liked where the story went and I didn't really know what to expect from this one because I haven't heard too much about it but it's one that I'd been curious about for a while and I'm really glad I finally picked it up because I really liked it. It's a, yeah, it's a pretty grim and bleak read, so if that's your kind of thing, then I definitely recommend it. It's also, yeah, if you like that kind of psychological look into someone's mind, this is a great one. And also if you like that kind of crime end of horror, then yeah, I highly recommend. This was a four star read for me and it's only the second novel of Ramsey Campbell's that I've read so far. The other one was The Influence which I also really enjoyed and yeah I read a couple of short stories by him which have been excellent so 
Definitely need to read more of his work. Next up I read Bones by Andrew Cole. This is a collection of short stories. I think there were four stories plus one very very short story at the end and these are mostly supernatural in nature in one way or another and yeah I quite enjoyed this. I enjoyed his writing style, I thought it was really easy to get into and the details and the characters were all really well done and there were definitely some creepy moments in here um, yeah, with it being a short story collection, it's hard to say too much about them, but if you like supernatural stuff, then I would definitely check it out. There are a couple of stories told from the perspective of children, which I did think were pretty well done, that can be hard to do, and then a couple of the stories were told from adult main characters, and they were well done too. I think the second two stories I enjoyed a bit more than the first two, but they were all good. And then the final story, the really short one, was actually one of my favourites. I think one of the things that dropped this down a little for me was that there were some ideas that seemed to crop up in more than one story and that just unfortunately for me felt a bit repetitive. But that said, there were some interesting ideas in here and some creepy moments. Overall, I rated this one three and a half stars and I liked it enough that I would definitely check out more of his work. I do have a copy of his novel, I think it's called Remains, so I'll definitely pick that up at some point in the future. Next up I read The Vampire's Kiss, which is book seven in the Power series by Jesse Harris, following teenage psychic Mackenzie Gold. This is a YA paranormal series from the 90s, and each one is like a standalone story but following the same characters and this one Mackenzie the main character meets this really handsome guy at a party he's called Michael and he's very mysterious and attractive and he wants to take her out and Mac does have a boyfriend called Aiden who she very much loves but she's too intrigued by Michael to say no and as you can probably guess from the title, it turns out that Michael is a vampire and he is intent on turning Mac into one to be with him forever. And the reason he chose her was because of her psychic powers and you know, he thinks she is an interesting <laughs> subject, I guess. As the story goes on, Mac finally figures out that there's something not quite right about Michael, but by the time she realises that he's a vampire and what his plan is for her, it might be too late to actually get herself out of his clutches because he is very powerful and is able to do certain things to, yeah, keep her kind of somewhat under his control. So I thought that was interesting in that Mackenzie then has to, you know, bring her powers to the table to try and get out of this situation. And I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, this was an enjoyable one. I've really enjoyed all of the books in this series, and this one wasn't my favourite out of them all, but it was still a good time. They're, yeah, really easy to read. I really enjoy his writing style, and yeah, this was just another fun read and I ended up rating this one three and a half stars. Okay, next up I read The Reddening by Adam Neville. This is a folk horror story set in the UK. I will say I went into this knowing nothing other than it was described as folk horror and, you know, having enjoyed a couple of his other books. So that was enough to grab my interest and that really worked for me because I had no expectations necessarily of where the story was going to go and if you are curious about this one then I would say skip ahead to the next book I'm talking about and just yeah go in knowing as little as possible but if you do want to hear a bit more about it I will carry on now. This is set in a small town on the south coast of England and there was a discovery 
of a cave and tons of ancient artefacts in there and there's basically been a dig going on there for some years as they're continuing to excavate the place and are coming across new finds and the story itself mainly focuses on two characters we have Kat who is a local journalist and we have Helen whose brother some years earlier had been in this area and at some point after that had killed himself so she has a connection to the place through her brother and is kind of doing a little bit of investigating herself and onto the folk horror element of the story I thought Adam Neville came up with a really unique way of depicting folk horror and you know my idea of folk horror is you know like pagan rituals or you know some kind of ancient god or gods but this one is prehistoric so I thought that was really cool really interesting and yeah he's a really great writer there were tons of moments throughout this book where you know I just had to stop and appreciate a sentence or a paragraph or whatever because yeah he really does have a way with words and it just seems to come effortlessly to him. The details and descriptions in there were so evocative and also you can tell the amount of effort he must have put into researching you know various elements that are within the story uh, for it to be authentic and also just the level of detail he puts into the story and the different layers within it yeah it's I've noticed this in the other books of his that I've read it's quite mind-boggling honestly the yeah amount of detail and attention to detail that he puts in here and it's yeah really awesome so yeah this was a fantastic story it was for me shaping up to be a five star read for quite a good chunk of it and unfortunately the final you know third or a quarter kind of did lose its trajectory a bit for me it was still a four star read and definitely still one that I would recommend and yeah without going into specific details yeah there was just something about the way the story went that didn't quite live up to how strong the first you know two thirds three quarters was but man that first you know chunk of the book was absolutely brilliant the characters I was you know really invested in them I thought they were both really well written and believable and yeah I loved seeing their journeys the folk horror element again without kind of going into too much detail were terrifying um they were yeah that whole thing was really well done really effective really creepy there was even one moment that I would class as a jump scare which is really hard to do in writing but yeah it was so good even though the story is mainly focused on Kat and Helen there are a bunch of other characters and yeah again they were all really well written and just made for a really great compelling story and yeah it is a shame that the yeah the end didn't quite uh, live up to the potential five star but it was still a really great read and I did really like the like actual ending yeah without going into spoilers uh, yeah it was definitely still a satisfying ending of sorts even though not everything quite added up for me then I read Ghost House by Claire McNally this was originally published in 1980 and I do have a separate review video for this already so I'll leave a link to that if you want to hear more of my thoughts but basically this is about a family who move from the city to an old house on the coast and surprise surprise this house is haunted and things go horribly wrong for this family and you can definitely tell this came out after the success of the Amityville Horror so there are some elements here that are you know well-known tropes and you know somewhat predictable but this one did have some interesting elements of its own too 
I think the main problem for me was the characters were a bit flat and so I didn't really get too invested in them. Also some of the lack of communication and poor decision making was a bit frustrating at times and the some of the supernatural things that go on were just a little bit too out of my range for the suspension of disbelief but saying that there were still some really effective moments in here and some yeah interesting ideas so overall I rated this one three stars and yeah you can check out my full review of that if you want to hear more. Next up I read Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess this is a novella that came out I think just earlier this year and this is a slasher story and yeah quite a short one and it's following a group of teenagers who end up going to explore this abandoned amusement park and there is a history at this place and 30 years ago there was a mass murder that took place there and yeah the place has been kind of boarded up and abandoned ever since. So naturally this group of several teenagers want to go and explore it and yeah things go violently awry for them. I quite enjoyed this one but it was a bit of a mixed experience for me. It definitely feels like the kind of story that you just want to kind of switch your brain off and go along for the ride and have fun with it. I think the problem for me was there were a few elements of the story that just didn't make any sense and I had a hard time kind of glossing over them in order to like really get involved in the story so unfortunately there were a few things that yeah just kept taking me out of the story and it yeah I guess took away a bit from my overall enjoyment level. That said this was fast paced and action packed and violent and bloody and people are getting killed left right and centre so yeah in that sense it was fun maybe I just had the wrong expectations for it I feel like yeah this was just kind of like a pretty straightforward slasher story and I I was maybe thinking it might do something different with the subgenre but it didn't really do that you know which is fine I'm always down for just a classic slasher setup but it would have been nice to see you know something else brought to the table. One thing I did really like was the fact that one of the main characters is a person of colour and it is written by a person of colour which you know are two things that we definitely need more of in the horror genre so that was awesome to see. I rated this one three stars and I would yeah definitely be keeping an eye out on what Jessica Guest does next. I'd be curious to read more of her work in the future. And last up I read a non-fiction book. This was the slasher movie book by J.A. Kurzweil. I think this has also come out under a couple of different names in like slightly updated editions. Um, I think it's also called like the teenage slasher book. And this was, yeah, just coincidentally <laughs> read at the same time as me reading Cirque Berserk. That wasn't intentional. <laughs> this is a book that I've been curious about for a couple of years but had never bit the bullet and bought it and I saw that my library had a copy in their catalogue so I requested it but yeah they're taking um, a lot of time with requests at the moment understandably and um, yeah so it took a while for me to actually get my hands on the book and it just so happened that it timed up for me reading a slasher piece of fiction as well. Anyway, this is about the golden age of slasher movies from 1978 to 1984 and it does put that into context of the things that came before that period and the things that came after it. So I liked that format. Um, I think this is definitely more of just an overview of the subgenre and films within it rather than any like in-depth commentary or analysis as such. It would have been nice if there had been a bit more meat to it but nevertheless it was still an interesting and informative read. 
I think one of the things that let it down a little is that it did at times just feel like I'm reading a list of movies, <laughs> you know, there was this movie and then there was that movie and then this one and it, yeah, that just became a little tiresome at times and also there seemed to be quite a focus on like box office numbers which again after a while I'm just like glazing over over those kind of details it just wasn't interesting to me but like I said I did still think this was a really good read the fact that it has so much information in there is really great the fact that it is this really good snapshot of the subgenre is really great um, I thought it was visually appealing as well you know there were tons of artwork from posters and VHS covers and such like throughout the book so yeah that definitely keeps it interesting I think if you are new to slashers if maybe you haven't seen any or many then yeah this would be an absolutely awesome book to pick up you can read it through you know get the context and then yeah make a list and work your way through it but I do think you know I've definitely seen a fair few slashers in my time definitely haven't seen anywhere near them all but you know I have a familiarity with the genre and the context of it uh, but even so it was still interesting to kind of see that all in one place you know and there were definitely a bunch of films mentioned in here that I haven't seen yet so you know some of those are ones that I've heard of before but just haven't gotten around to watching yet so it was cool to kind of have them back on my radar and then there were a few that I hadn't heard of that sounded interesting to me so yeah hopefully I can check them out too. I'm glad I finally picked this one up it was a fun read and I rated it four stars. So that was everything I read in November let me know if you've read any of these I would love to hear your thoughts or tell me about what books you've been reading recently Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video.